here at the One Movement site in Victoria Park looking at how the Olympic impacts young people in East London and as you can see here lots of people came over here to try out different sports such as fencing, bike riding and even sumo wrestling. The legacy of the Olympic is to get young people trying out different sports and I'm going to try out sumo wrestling to see if that's something I can take up. Sumo wrestling is fun, but I don't think I'm cut out for it. It seems like the Olympic has a positive impact on everybody. And with all these people coming to watch the Olympics, where are they all going to stay? We're going to cross over to one of our reports to check out the impact on housing. More than 11,000 houses will be built on the Olympic site in the next 20 years. Changes to social housing policy will freeze out the majority of the local people due to the high costs. The charity shelter calculates the monthly rent for £953 in Newham. The average price is £763. This could be seen as affordable, however it is way beyond the reach of the local people. Well, I think it's good that there's a lot of new development around the Olympic Park. Yeah, I think it's great that they're renovating you know, the local area. Any additional housing tends to bring down the overall cost of housing. It has improved the area. House prices in the Olympic boroughs are under extreme pressure due to the influence of foreign buyers driving up house prices. During the Olympics, statistics suggest that 30% of landlords will up rent by up to 50%. 27% will double their rents and 16% will triple rents. The Olympics may have created new housing that is expensive, but people here still seem to think that it's a good thing as the area has been rejuvenated. The Olympics is a great chance to promote sport and healthy living by it's being sponsored by big companies such as McDonald's and Coca-Cola. What are your thoughts on McDonald's sponsoring the Olympics? On McDonald's sponsoring the Olympics? Yeah. Uh, it depends how that money's got like used. If it goes down into the grassroots to, to facilitate the things that are going to improve like sport and people being able to participate in sport, then uh, yeah, if there's anyone else that's going to be big and sort of like green and promote healthy eating, that's able to put the same amount of money and investment as in as they can, then then great. Um, it seems a bit strange that the Olympics are sponsored by places like McDonald's when you're promoting a healthy lifestyle. I think it's fine, absolutely fine, McDonald's sponsoring the Olympics. Uh, do you think McDonald's uh, sponsoring the Olympics will encourage young people to eat more junk food? Oh, we've got tag team going um, on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, really. <laughs> it just, you would have thought they would have picked sort of sponsors that promote a healthy lifestyle. Uh, not particularly, no. I think uh, young people will, will eat food and drink irrespective of McDonald's sponsoring the Olympics. Some people think that McDonald's won't encourage people to eat more junk food, but is it sending out the right message? Um, do you think the events like this are going to help young people get involved in sports? I hope so. I think uh, what London's done to inspire uh, young kids now to get back into sport and athletics, and any sport really, I think it'll, it will hopefully have a knock-on effect. Well, I think it's a very big impact, a great thing for London. Yeah, it's really good, like, makes you into some like, sport and makes you more, like, interested in it. We're going to go over to one of the reports to check out how London's coping with all the extra people in the transport. I'm standing here in Victoria Park, and as you can see, it's busy all around me. It holds up to 50,000 people, but that's nothing compared to the 4 million people in London right now. Because of the Olympics, up to 855,000 extra people are using the London transport network, but so far it seems to be running OK. We came by car and then went on the train under the, on the underground. We walked actually because we live um, about 10 minutes walk that way. I had a wonderful ride. I came up on my bike. Transport was absolutely brilliant. There was plenty of people but everyone was in good spirits. Events like these are bringing more and more people together, providing entertainment over the summer holidays and new sports for people to enjoy after the Olympics are over. We're having a great time, it's a very good atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. every second of it, yeah. Yeah, we're having a great time. So it seems like everyone we've spoken to has had a great time and it wasn't difficult getting here. London's doing well. The good news is that people ain't having trouble travelling around. Another way to travel around is by horse riding and I want to give that a go. Hi, and I'm about to try horse riding and can you give me any tips for horse riding? Well, I'm not quite sure where to start. There's a lot. I think here is a good starting platform working on a mechanical horse to get the feel and the posture, getting your core strength. 
Do you think the Olympics is going to help people, young people, uh, get into horse riding? I really hope so. I think if anybody attended Greenwich, they would have been incredibly inspired. And do I have to wear the helmet? Yes, you do. Health <laughs> and safety. I've had fun here at the One Movement site and most people I've met think that the Olympic is a great chance to influence young people into sports and healthy lifestyle and me myself have tried sumo wrestling and I'm great at horse riding but I think I'll just stick to basketball. <laughs>